Last time on Round Sailing, we visited Victoria on Vancouver Island for a second time. We announced that we're having a baby, and we want to thank you so much for all the congratulations and the heartwarming comments that we received. We sailed back to the US and found out that we didn't get an extension on our visas. And then we set sail south, out on open ocean. During the first night at sea, we sailed close to a naval exercise area. I couldn't see any naval activity, but a lot of strobe lights on the horizon, probably markers on fishing nets or long lines further out. So it's the second day on our sail south. Right now we're uh, about 25 nautical miles outside the Colum Columbia River in Astoria, which is in here. Uh, we still have around 160, 170 nautical miles to go to Coos Bay. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I think we'll go there. Uh, we might continue to Crescent City, but we'll see how the wind is. Uh, with the speed we're doing now, we're going to be in Coos Bay tomorrow evening around 8. Which is really great, because that's when it's slack, the current there. So hopefully it will be uh, pretty easy to enter, because it's a river bar you need to cross to get in there. Um, yeah, and on the chart, I've been reading a bit about it and it doesn't seem to be too bad. Yeah, last night there was a lot of fishing vessels the whole night and the wind totally died, uh, yeah, I don't know, around 12. So we motored from midnight until this morning and then the wind has slowly been picking up now during the day. A couple of hours ago we were uh, wing on wing but now we have a broad reach so now we have both sails on the same side but I kept the boom up because it might be that we will go deeper later today so just keep it up I'm so seasick I can't keep any food or anything down just everything comes up but today I've been been here because it's kind of it's in the middle of the boat and it's as low as you can be in the boat so the movements are a bit less here but uh, it's the rolly seas that makes me sick oh this is what i can eat <laughs> Make it yeah, a little bit of this I'm eating one banana, a little bit of rice, but everything has come up again, so I'm exhausted. Yeah, mm. it's not fun. No, and I'm no use at all. I'm Johan takes care of me and the boat and the sailing, which is good. <laughs> yeah, but we're sailing quite fast so we'll be there in less than 24 hours now yeah tomorrow evening we're going to coos bay yeah southern oregon i like to lay down i was good that i left the boom out because the wind is turning more and more to the north 
So in a while I will probably pull the sail over to the boom again. So it will be wing on wing for the night. The wind has picked up to around 16, I think it is, true wind. And the waves have started to build now. Uh, but I think it will calm down a bit when the sun comes down. It's always like this couple of hours, you know, when you're getting closer to sunset, that the wind picks up a bit, and then it often dies down a bit when the when the sun sets. So that's what I'm hoping for. We have uh, one reef now in the main, but we're still doing. Yeah, at the moment we do 7.5 knots. Yeah, we're actually sailing a bit too fast. The recommendation is to go in in Coos Bay at slack current. And that's uh, quarter past eight tomorrow evening. I mean, uh, one hour either side is okay, but still seven o'clock. I think we'll be there already by four. And then we'll have two, 2.5 knots of current coming out from that river. And that's not good with these seas when you're crossing the bar. So probably if the wind doesn't die down this night, we'll reef down a lot tomorrow and go slow. So we'll be at Coos Bay around seven uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening. And the balance in the boat is really good now since we cut the boom a bit shorter. Uh, now the, because normally when you have like a beam reach or a broad reach, we always had to reef a bit early because we had too much pressure in the mainsail and a lot of that a bit too far aft which was pushing the front up when it was especially when it was gusty wind it feels a lot more balanced now the sail areas and also the the pressure on the main is a bit moved forward so it doesn't turn the boat up as much when you get when you have gusty winds when you're on a broad reach or on a broad reach we can um, sail in a bit higher winds we still have the same sail area in the main but we can use it uh, a bit higher up well I really need to pull that sail over now yeah we can use the main sail without reefing it into a bit uh, more heavier wind now or heavier it can be a bit more windy before we need to take the first reef now, even if the sail area on the main is still the same as it's the, the old one. So that's really good. really feel sorry for Marlin. She's been yeah, feeling really seasick. It was many years since I was that seasick that she is now. You, you know when you have starting to throw up it's like there's no turning back. It will take a couple of days before you come back from seasickness like that. You need to come ashore or you need to stay out at least three days before you're feeling better again. So probably this will last for her all the way until port tomorrow evening. So yeah, I feel uh, it's not fun for her. Before leaving Port Angeles, Yuan had suggested that I should be taking the bus south and he would solo sail. But I felt that I really wanted to be part of the trip as well, even if I've been feeling quite nauseous. It's two o'clock at night. The wind has dropped a little bit. 
which is good because we were going too fast before. So now we're down to five and a half to six knots of speed. And the wind is around yeah, 10 knots. Uh, so we keep the reef in the main because we don't want to go too fast. And right now there's a lot of fishing boats around us. But it's getting shallower in this area, so I guess the, the upwellings from the deep sea makes, makes this a good fishing ground. We have uh, 88 nautical miles to go to Coos Bay. So if we can keep this speed, we'll be there in good time. The wind has started to ease during the night, so I shaked out the reef after sunrise. I'm feeling a little bit better today. Haven't been, uh, haven't thrown up uh, since last night. Now it's noon. So that feels good. We have 40 nautical miles left to Coos Bay. That's around eight hours. So in a couple of hours we'll start listening to the VHF. The Coast Guard has these broadcasts where they are telling you how the conditions are at the different bars all along the coast here of Oregon and also I think in, in um, California. So I think the broadcast is on channel 22A but they say on some of these bars it can be dangerous even if if you come at the wrong time it can be dangerous even if the seas are you know even if the wind are not so strong and the waves are not so big out, out in the ocean it could be dangerous conditions on the bar We're three miles, three nautical miles outside the entrance now. A couple of hours ago we took down the main and we've been reefing down a lot on the headsail too. Because we were going too fast. So right now we're doing only like four knots. Just to time the, the slack current. But we'll be there a bit early. Even so, but I think it will be okay. It's not a lot of, it's not so very big waves today, so should be alright. And there is no warnings or anything, but of course it's always best to be as close as possible to slack current. We will be entering about an hour before that, so. As we had predicted, the river bar was calm, and it wasn't any problem entering to Coos Bay. In hindsight, we could probably have crossed the bar on any level of the tide in these swell and weather conditions. However, we always take extra precautions when arriving to a port we haven't visited before, and have no local knowledge about. River bars like the one in Coos Bay can be really dangerous and there is a lot of different variables that can make the conditions hard to predict. Here are some shots from the same bar on a not so calm day.
It felt great to tie up in the marina, and I felt better straight away. Now I was super hungry though, so getting something to eat was first on the priority list. This is Charleston, a small fishing village in the Coos Bay area. The actual town of Coos Bay is situated a bit further up the river. Since we got here, the wind has picked up quite a lot, which they say here the local is um, pretty common. So we have the Cape Blanco, I think, out here, outside here, just south from here, and uh, it's a windy spot. And during the summers here, the north uh, northwesterly winds are the prevailing winds, and they are typi typically pretty strong. So I'm hoping for at least like a two day weather window with a bit less wind so we can continue south and get past this uh, cape. Life in Charleston revolves around crabbing and fishing. The marina is home to quite many fishing vessels, but also a big coast guard station. The marina was quite affordable at $20 a night, so it was a good place for us to wait out the strong winds. It looks very much like home, or at least in the south, with this grass and the sand. In the southwest of Sweden looks like this, the beaches. On the other side of the village lies the ocean and some really wonderful and spectacular beaches. That's the entrance, the river bar. Still looks pretty okay, even though it's very windy today. There's no warnings. So I guess when it becomes dangerous, it's mostly when you have a gale force winds from the southwest coming by like a low pressure. And right now it's a really strong high pressure. The Pacific high is strong and the winds are from the north along the coast. Uh, at least here, I, I guess that depends on in what direction the, the bar enters is, is in. I think uh, like the Columbia River going into Portland and Astoria is more dangerous even if you have uh, northerly winds.
Thank you so much for watching. We'd be so happy if you would subscribe and help us reach our next goal of 100,000 subscribers. If you do, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Also, a huge thanks to everyone supporting our videos. You make it possible to continue creating videos on our own terms.